Ladies and gentlemen, back on the show for the 97th time, our friend, friend of the show, Mayor de Blasio. Good morning, Mayor. What? Do I get to be called a friend of the show? Of, that's ev- the status I'm looking for, friend that, of the show. That's right. Every time you come on, you're, you're what we call a FOT, an F-O-T, a friend of the show. Well, there's an S on that, too, but, you know, forget that. Forget that part. My, my mission is complete. <laughs> Look, uh, we got we got a lot of things we got to cover, and I know you got limited time, and I always appreciate you taking time for us and our listeners. It, it, it really means a lot to us. Well, I appreciate what you guys do, and I appreciate the seriousness of the discussion mixed with a lighthearted touch. There you go. A little <laughs> laughter. Um, well, let's get, to, let's get to the lighthearted stuff. Dante's off to school. I saw Shalane tweet yesterday, and she didn't want mom and dad following him along to school, making him look like a cornball and a freshman. Aww. Dante. Dante has a mind of his own. <laughs> so he went to pre-orientation, and he really wanted to go on his own. He wanted to be his own man, and he's about to be 18 in just a few days, so he, he's asserting his independence as he should, but we're going to be going up in a few days to bring him all his stuff. Ah, got it. Got it, got it. Me- and he will be calling home for money. Of course he will. Of course. <laughs> Mayor, did you set up any rules for him? Any rules? Yeah, do you have any specific rules that he needs to follow? You know, Dante is a very level-headed dude. He's very, very cool, calm, collected. So... Just the normal things about thinking before he acts. Yes, don't, and also, don't embarrass the family. There's a lot of work put into this family. Don't get up there and, and act crazy. Dante, I, I, you know what? I am very proud to say, I think Sherlane would say the same thing. Dante is a wise soul. We have no doubt he will not ever embarrass this family. He's, he's just a grounded guy. There you go. Um, also, you know, I want to do, uh, you know, talk about speaking of school pre-K. I know that's at the top of your list. Um, we're just two weeks away from the start of school, and uh, you want to make sure that all parents are aware of uh, what they should be doing. Yeah, and listen, almost right now, we've got almost 70,000 families mm. who have applied for pre-K. Now, let me remind you of a very important fact about high-quality, full-day pre-K. It's free yeah did i mention it's free free it's, free uh, free oh so now if you had to get a similar situation for your child on the open market in this city ten thousand dollars a year fifteen thousand dollars a year maybe try more try Probably 24 more. two thousand yeah. dollars right. a month right so it's really important for any parent who doesn't have their child yet in pre-k mm-hmm. to understand that this is free, it is available in all parts of the city. There is a seat for literally every child, every four-year-old in New York City, there's a seat for. Now, if you haven't yet applied, it's time. You can call 311, you can use text, you can text the word pre-K, P-R-E-K, to 877-877, or go to our website, nyc.gov slash pre-K, and get all the information, see where all the sites are, sign up, but the time is now. And if you want a seat that's closer to your home or closer to your work, the faster you apply, the more chance you get the seat you're looking for. Um, Shawnee Culture here on our program. His son, his three, three-year-old, right? Yeah, my three-year-old who will be four in December starting pre-K uh, in two weeks. How easy actually. was the sign-up process? The sign-up process was not that easy. Uh, we applied. We got the top... Uh, I mean, you get five schools that you can oh, get. Oh, so you had choices. We had some choices. We didn't get into the school that we wanted to, but we did get a school. We did Got get it. placed. So, And let me remind you that, I, first of all, you can talk to an enrollment specialist mm-hmm. who will literally work with each parent to figure out the best location for them. Okay. And even if you don't get your first choice, sometimes seats open up later on. Oh, so you can go back around. And reapply. So you can go back around. So they're important, but you have to get in the game. Right. You, right. As they say, you have to be in it. To win it, so, so the one who has to apply first. So, Mayor, once you have once you have a seat and you have a location, it's easier to transfer around. Correct. If you have a seat, you have to. So, once you have signed up and you pre-registered your child, mm-hmm. if another seat opens that's better for you and it's available, we want you to get it. But the bottom line is, we want every child in a good seat somewhere. 
and we literally have the capacity for every single child in the city. Right. Um, and now, Mayor, just you know, on the for people looking for the ins, why is this pre-K thing so important for you in the education of? New Yorkers. I know the answer, but I would like you to articulate it because you're looking forward into the future with this and just the overall public school system, correct? First of all, I'm looking into the future of every family. So I can say, I'm talking from experience, Kiara and Dante both had full day pre-K. It changed their lives. They are two wonderful children, and one of the contributing factors is when they were able to develop the most, when their brain was able to develop the most, which is in those years zero to five, they got full day pre-K. They got immersed in education at a point when it could have the biggest impact on their development. Now, what my message to every parent is, today's world is different than the one we grew up in. The need for education is much greater if you're going to be an economic success. So parents who want their kids to get the strongest grounding, what used to be, you know, you could go to start school in first grade and end up getting a job somewhere. Nowadays, you need to start as early as pre-K to get the kind of educational grounding for what today's economy demands. Mm -hmm. So this is for parents to understand it's better for their own lives because here's a free service that takes pressure off the family budget mm -hmm. and allows for the family schedule with so many people working one, two, or more jobs. But also, it's setting the foundation for your child to be strong in the future and to have a strong career in the future. There you go. All right. Laura Staus. Good morning, Mr. de Blasio. I wanted to talk to you about affordable housing, right? So is affordable housing really affordable? Like for someone like, I don't know, like a recent college student or someone working like a new entry level position making anywhere from like $40,000, right? Apartments now are like $1,400, $1,500. And with, you know, the taxes, like we get taxed about, I don't know, like 30% of our, mm -hmm. our, our income. That means like I, that's hardly enough for us to be afford a $1,400 apartment. Look, we always are going to have this challenge. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to pretend we don't have a fundamental affordability crisis in this city. And the fact is our job is to do everything we can about it. So our plan is 200,000 units. We're either going to create or we're going to preserve them if they're affordable already. That is enough for half a million people. Now, it is different income levels, different people. I was, for example, I was in the Rockaways last week, and we opened the development there. Every apartment in that development is for people who make $36,000 a year or less. There are other projects we're working on that are more for folks who are more middle income, like someone who's a teacher or a police officer or a bus driver. So right. we have a variety. I think the bottom line is we're trying to produce housing for some folks at the very lowest income level and also for folks who are working people but still struggling to make ends meet. I'm not going to say we'll ever have the ideal supply, but our job is to pump it up every day. So, for example, the year we just finished, our city fiscal year, 20,000 units were financed and started towards construction. That is enough for 50,000 people. That's in one year alone. So it's going to make a real impact on people's lives. So, Mayor de Blasio, um, there are factors, and I'm, I'm going to get real, like, inside baseball political with you while I have you for a moment. Because I'm watching the press come out against you. Um, you know, every day it seems like Mayor de Blasio did this, Mayor de Blasio did that. I know as an outsider watching that a lot of that press comes from the elite in this city who are very rich, that don't like your affordable housing initiatives. They don't like potentially how you're handling the homeless situation. They don't like how you're handling Times Square. There's the other factors that have issues with how you've stood for the common folk with a, a response to police brutality. But the common folk don't have big PR companies to put stories in the daily news and the, and the post every day, right? So you, I watch you take this beating while you stand for common folk at I know I'm going deep here mayor de Blasio and, and play this however you want to play it um how are you going to handle this pressure when it comes time for re-election because there are people with a lot of money that don't want to see you get re-elected because you're for the common man well I, I appreciate what you're saying and I think there's a lot of truth there and this is what I'd say to it my job is not to get lost in the noise and to do the work and to produce things that change people's lives so, for example, we said two years ago in the campaign, we could keep people safe and we could greatly, greatly reduce stop and frisk at the same time. A lot of people said that was impossible. Look at today. We had under 50,000 stops last year compared to 700,000 in 2011. That's a real change in people's lives and they can feel it. And yet, 
the city is safer than it was a few years ago. But the propaganda machine will say, oh, July was worse. July 2015 was worse than 2014 by two percentage points. You know, I, I think you're right to say there's always misinformation. But my view is this, and I've got to always explain it to people, and I've got to get out there and be with people, which is what I've always believed in, being in communities and talking to people directly. If we're producing affordable housing people need, if we are keeping the city safe while making it fairer, obviously providing things that families need, like pre-K, and by the way, in September also, every middle school child in this city this coming September has a right to an after-school seat for free. That's never existed before. Every single middle school child, if they want to go to after school, they can go for free. These are big changes in people's lives. My job is to go out there and talk to the people about it and make sure they're getting what they deserve. I think people are smart. I don't think they'll buy the hype. I think if they see things changing in their own lives, that's how you move forward. Now, and then uh, before we let you go, uh, and I appreciate how candid you are right there, um, Legionnaire's disease uh, was a big topic uh, some weeks ago, and the word is that things are under control. Um, is there any details you can give us on how, A, how things got out of control to begin with, and B, how the governor of our state um, acted as if you were supposed to have the funding to control it? I, don't, I didn't understand the po political play there. Well, I'd say on the issue itself, we never saw an outbreak like that before. I'm very, very pleased to say that outbreak is over. We have confirmed the single source that it came from, uh, and it is entirely over now. Uh, the fact is, when we responded, the ultimate authority on this topic is the federal government, the Tenders for Disease Control, and they said the city's response was strong. So. I think we did the right thing in a totally uncharted territory. No one had ever seen a Legionnaire's outbreak like this before in New York City. What I do know at the same time, we have to be blunt about it, is the South Bronx where this happened uh, is one of the places that epitomizes what I talk about when I talk about the tale of two cities. This is a community, it's one of the poorest communities in the city, one of the poorest communities in the nation, and with huge economic disparities and health disparities. So everything we're trying to do in general for the whole city I hope we'll particularly uplift the South Bronx so we can make people economically stronger and healthier for the long run and help to avoid things like this. But the fact is, this was like a lightning bolt. No one saw anything like this before in New York City. We now know for the future how we see anything like it, how to contain it very quickly. Well, thank you for uh, your discussion today, Mayor de Blasio. Is there anything else other than pre-K? I know that's the hot topic today. Are you ready to endorse Hillary Clinton while you're on the Hot 97 right now? Well, you know, I, I always would say if one were to make such a momentous announcement, there's only one place to make it. But uh, <laughs> no, let me, I, can, I can tell I can tell you this much. I've been very impressed uh, by what she's been saying lately. And, uh, you know, I put forward with a group of progressives from around the nation a concept of how we fight the rampant inequality in this country and the income inequality that's holding the country back. Uh, she and I think the other Democratic candidates are really speaking to those issues. Got it. So you know, but but we'll get to uh, we'll get to everything else later on. And and any and any conversations with President Obama now that there's word that he may be moving to New York City when his uh, candidacy is over. Well, look, I, I think it'd be fantastic for New York City, and I can certainly say we would do we would roll out the red carpet in every way. So I'm very hopeful on that front and. Uh, Look, I, I hope we become the place that uh, all former presidents choose to live because we are the happening place. Let's there it is. Talk about it. Yeah. Mayor de Blasio, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for him. And, uh, Mayor, good luck Good luck on getting those boobs out of Times Square. I know that's going to be tough for you. I mean, legionnaires is one thing, but boobs in Times Square, I mean, that's a whole other problem. But it's more about the aggressive panhandling <laughs> and like, the, the crazy elbows attacking people because I've been attacked by an elbow. Remember I told you? You I smacked an elbow. I smacked an elbow. An elbow for being too aggressive with me, yes. Look, it's all it's a business. That's the bottom line here. We are going to these are all businesses, and they have to be regulated like any other business. And we are going to get that done in the coming weeks, finding a way to do that while still respecting people's constitutional rights. And we have one, one other very important comment. Yeah. I do have advice for the president, if he chooses to come to New York City, that his media home should be Hot 97. That's right. <laughs> That's right, Tell Mayor. Him. Tell him. That's right. I, Tell I him. I just have to say that objectively, it really should be, don't you think? 
we completely agree with you. <laughs> Listen, when it when it comes to politics and nonsense, we got you covered. All right. Take care, Mayor. Thank you, Thanks Mr. Bye-bye.